All right. Um, yeah, so today on It's Not Common Sense, I get to have one of my long time, I want to say childhood friends, but we didn't know each other since we were like 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've known Miss uh, Jack, Miss, well, I want to say Jacqueline. You can. Well, like, it is my name. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you how I know you. I know Miss mm-hmm. Jackie Norman Smith here uh, since uh, second year of university. We knew each other in first year, but you never liked me. No. I was an asshole. <laughs> I am an asshole. You that's not me. <laughs> um, and Jackie was one of the hardest working producing students or students end of sentence at AFTER. And you just continued to push that work ethic into your actual career and blossomed into an incredible producer and production manager. Um, so now I've had the pleasure of being able to work with you from you producing me as a director when we were doing like those third year documentaries <laughs> to seeing you work with the likes of Black Coffee, work with the likes of AKA Anati, and then go onto the large television circuit onto shows like Real Housewives of Durban, Real Housewives of Johannesburg. Um, so I really want us to kind of just go through your story and tell me about how you went from being a hardworking girl in high school to being the hardest working producer that I know. <laughs> sure. Thank you for that. That's very sweet. Um, so let's just say the film and TV industry bug bit me when I was probably eight years old. Oh, wow. Wanted to be an actress though. Like saw Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen. I was like, I want to be them. Yes, I know they're twins, but I was like, I want to be <laughs> what they like. I want to do what they do because it's just looks so cool. I was that child when we would go to blockbusters and rent DVDs. I was looking for which ones had the bonus features, the bloopers behind the scenes because oh, wow. that's what I wanted to watch. I mean, the movies was great, but I was like, let's see what happens behind <laughs> the scenes, you know? Because in Durban, where I was, you don't get exposed to film mm. and TV stuff. So I was like, well, this is how I can see it, Hollywood. And that's where I wanted to go. I was like, I'm going to go to Hollywood, straight out of school. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, <down>. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, Then high school came and I was, um, I got interested in plays mm. and I got to work behind the scenes. And in grade 11, I was the student director for the school plays. They never had a grade 11 student do it. It's usually matric students. Mm. But none of the matrics wanted to do it. And I was like, hey, let me try it out. And I was like, I'm going to be a director. So no no longer an actress, I'm going to direct. And that's what made me apply to Vits. And do. they had a new uh, program that they were piloting. And I was like, this sounds amazing. I want to do this. So I finished matric, go to Vits. And first year i found it was like more theory based mm. compared to practical and i was like i need to learn practical. like i want to learn i want to be on set I learn. yeah that's one of the big things they say is like vits and uct it's mm. almost like you're learning to be a film critic more than actually getting your hands on the cameras no, exactly like i can write an essay i can write a three thousand word essay like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's what they taught you but on the film set no one really cares how long you can write an essay it's like what you can actually do and the skills you can do so mm. i was like you know what, did my research and I was like, I'm going to go to after, but I'm going to start again from first year. Okay. Because I was like, I want to do this properly. And started after, and then the producing bug bit. <laughs> I was like, because I'm very organized with like paperwork and stuff. And I was like, hey, I can actually do this in a job. <laughs> Just real quick. So yeah. when you entered after, it was essentially your second year of tertiary education. Correct. But everybody else going into after, it's their first year. Mm. Now, you've already had your first year. You've had your crazy party phase at Vits. Mm. And you know, film school, people are going wild and crazy. How did you keep yourself centered? Quite easily, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I stayed quite far away from the university. Like, mm-hmm. I was having to travel every day. So, I stayed in Hillcrest, which was a drive. And not much happens up in Hillcrest. Mm. Um, and... Film school being pricey, I had to get a job, like waitressing mm. and stuff, because films are not, or TV shows are not cheap to make. <laughs> yeah. after. Like when you're having to buy props and like makeup and stuff and clothes, I was just like, no. That's another thing that I want to talk about because people don't chat about the fact that if you're at After and somebody else is richer than you, they may make a better movie than you just because they have access to better resources than you. Yeah, that is 100% correct. 
Side note on that, I remember I used to drive my mom's car to, to after because it also needed driving and she couldn't drive at that stage. And someone came up to me, I was like, you got a Jeep for your first car? Bear in mind, this, this car is like done now over 200,000 kilometers. Like mm. it's an old car. And with that, when I was told that, I was like, you don't know me. Like, don't judge me before you get to know me. Like, yes, it's a Jeep, but it's a very, very old Jeep, you know, mm. like, which now coming back to your fact about how the um, a richer student can make a better movie or better TV show is 100% correct. Like, you can see it. Like, mm. maybe one group can only afford to buy two wardrobe outfits and they're having to pull stuff in from people's closets and stuff mm. but someone else could buy a whole new wardrobe and it's top class and you're just like oh, like mm. you know and now they could keep the color palettes that you can't do exactly and locations because locations were pricey thankfully we did have a lot of connections in third year like some people's houses and stuff that we got to use shout out claudia <laughs> 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 um but if we hadn't have had those connections who knows what our TV screwed. show would have looked like. Yeah. Um, I think I thought we did a great job. But yeah. had we not had the vacation, who knows? And that's also just touching back a little bit. Mm. I, I feel like something that has recurringly entered your career is that people have always thought that you had this privilege that you've never had. Mm. People have always created this idea of because you're white, you have this kind of advantage and that you've always been given this. But I've noticed that actually in a lot of instances, you've been limited and you've had to push through. Um, yes. So being brought up in a single parent household, you do obviously not have <clears throat> as much as a two parent household because yeah. there's two salaries coming in. But shout out to my mom. She did what she could. She gave me everything that I needed, mm. not what I wanted, because it's a want, it's not a need. You don't mm. need the stuff. Hence why when I entered film school and after, I was like, I'm gonna get a job. I actually had three jobs. I was a waitress, I worked at a farmer's market, and I did babysitting slash house sitting. Jeez. <laughs> so yeah, which was great. It paid a lot for our team. <laughs> 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 Which was, it was great. Like, and I was able to drive to school every day. I mean, I wasn't paying for accommodation because I stayed at home, which mm. thank, I was very thankful for. But yeah, I was able to do a lot of stuff because I earned my own money. And I was like, okay, I don't mind spending on it because it's for my education. I mean, that's why maybe I also wasn't a big party animal mm. in my after days because I was like, I could use this money for other stuff, for my education, to better my education, to better the wardrobe, better the painting, the, the colors of the wall and the studio, fun times. <laughs> so yeah, I would say, yeah, it, I think that's what also pushed me to work hard. And like, I have, after I finished film school, I have to make this work. Like I have, like you've just spent so much money because after fees we own are not cheap because it is a mm, private institution. Exactly. Spend all this money. I have to make it work now. You have to prove it's worth it at this exactly. point. Exactly. So now, immediately after you finished after, um, that last production that we did was Echelon, you went straight into the Mnet Magic and in Motion internship. Am I correct? correct? Yes. Now, that's a paid internship, mm -hmm. but it also gives you a look into the industry. Yes. Can you chat to us about that experience? Sure. So, firstly, shout out to Bobby Heaney and Vuyo Sakupa, who selected me to be one of 11 in the internship program. Um, it was quite a grueling process. We had to obviously um, submit an application, then go through an interview phase, and then psychometric testing, and only then did we get oh, chosen. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. very interesting. And I was that person. I drove to Joburg for my interview. They're like, "Oh, we can do a phone interview," and I was like, "I'll see you in Joburg." <laughs> <laughs> then I went a step further. Sipe, you know me. I don't just do things half halfway. I. Ha printed out my CV and everything and I did them a whole flip file of like letters of recommendation. Let's go! I put in film scripts that we did. I, put, I think I even put a flash drive of our echelon and our other um, beauty of nature. Beauty yes. of nature. <laughs> Muslim and Dal. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> put it in this flip file to be like, hi, and then also made it pretty. Mm. I was like, because you're going to remember me. Like, I'm getting this internship because I needed something post after. Mm. And that was, you knew that not only would you get a break into the industry of Mnet, but they're paying. Yes. And so many people after leaving after, we were so broke for so long. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was tough. Like, <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so God accept. Bear in mind, sorry, on the day that I was waiting for the phone call that they said, we, you might know, you might not know. Mm-hmm. I was really looking to go work at a summer camp in um, the, the US because I was like, I need to earn money this year. I can't be doing nothing. And I go to the US, Jeez. then I can go to Hollywood. Because like, ah, Hollywood was still still in the back of my wow. head. Yeah, and I was like, I need to earn money. I'm not going to be sitting around. And if I can rather do that, then because you get like a visa where you can go travel for a bit afterwards. I was like, get my CV and hand it out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Literally on that day, I got a phone call from the Mnet people saying, you've been selected. And I was like, we need you in April in Joburg. And I was like, done. I made. This was amazing. Amazing. Started the M- Mnet internship. And oh my gosh. All film students highly, highly recommend for you to do it if you wow. can. Like if you're willing to move to Joburg and stuff. Every month you're on a new production. You're working with the best of the best in Joburg industry. We um, we also got to travel to a film festival in Cape Town. Mm. They really make it like a well-rounded, educated um, internship. So when you leave there, you're like, I know what I want to do. I mean, I got to design wardrobe for because we got to make four films. Sorry, from Zanzi Magic. Mm. I produced two of those. Lion produced two of those. And then I was wardrobe on one and wardrobe assistant on one because I was still wrapping up the one film. They're like, we don't want to give you a big job, but you can still do this job. Mm. And yeah, it was absolutely incredible. I learned so much. Also, another shout out to the slime producer who I met, who was a line producer of Isibaya, Susanna Ward. Mm. Absolutely incredible. She was my mentor. She actually helped us on the four movies we made from Zanzi Magic. Showed me the rope, showed me how to budget. Like, you know my budget, Sipe. <laughs> I think um, I need to actually take these people back to a story. Yeah. There was a point where you and I actually fought because I made a budget that was really ugly. And you were just like, you said to one of the directors who were working with you, were like, okay, in future, I think I just need to handle these. <laughs> it came from a place of love, Sipe. It came from a place of love, but you were just like, I just, I don't think Sipe should. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I back your budgets. <laughs> but yeah, Suzanne Award. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Learned some, we were probably on, so I got a placement at Isibaya Ooh. for a month. Um, what does that mean, a placement? So I was their intern. So two of the okay. Mnet um, interns, we got put there to learn for a month on how stuff works. And we were both in the production office because this other girl, she was also one of the line producers for one of the four films that we did from Zanzi Magic. And we learned everything. Like Susanna would say, okay, how would you budget for this? Like we're doing a TV show, eight part, how would you budget for this? We're doing this. How would you budget for that? This is what I do during my day. So we actually got to sit in her office with her and see what would happen. Like, obviously, some stuff we couldn't know because it... Confidential. Yeah. So they were like, can the interns just (laughs) step out? And we're like, quite happy to. We'll go see what's happening on set because the production office was at the warehouse where they would shoot a lot of the easy bias Mm. scenes. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. Another amazing director I got to shadow was Mantle N. Mm. Oh, my word. Wow. Also learned so much about him. Learned about lighting scenes. Learned about um, how to put characters and how you'd want them to react to each other when something is said. Because we worked on... Like blocking. Blocking and stuff. Yeah, because I was on... I shadowed him and also the continuity supervisor, Tandor. Which is not a joke, guys. Continuity is not a game. (laughs) You know when you get annoyed when the water's here and then there's another shot and the water's down here? Yes, that's continuity. (laughs) (laughs) It's a proper job. (laughs) So, yeah, Tandor and Mandla were absolutely incredible. Um, They were working on lockdown at the time. So we were shooting at Constitution Hill freezing cold middle of winter oh my (laughs) gosh obviously prisons are not warm but wow it like the one day we actually had to drive from there to a house in Soweto and Tando was like no come with us in our car and I was like okay it's quite weird an intern going with the director and the continuity supervisor because maybe they want to discuss stuff learned so much they were talking about different shots and I was just like I wish I could have recorded that conversation it was absolutely incredible Mm. um so really enjoyed the drama series, really enjoyed. So real quick, so yeah. not only were you gaining a mentorship, but also you were networking Correct. with some of the people who were essentially creating the current industry. Yes. They were creating the, the, the visuals for how South Africa's mm-hmm. industry is today. 
that's why I said this internship, if someone can do if you don't know what you're wanting to do in the industry and you're willing to learn, you're willing to make the cup of coffee, you're willing to be <laughs> on set at 3 a.m. because you need to be the first one there to make, like you help set up stuff like mm. for the director's, um, the director's room, if they're sitting there and stuff. You do that because also it's your your the impression you make and that's how you get the phone calls like hey we want you on the set like hey we've got this new movie coming out do you want to work on it and stuff um can i ask you how did you stay cool in situations where you were with such high-powered people because so when i was at that same stage because mm -hmm. we're the same age yeah we graduated the same time when i was at that same stage um i got into the mnet magic and motion internship as well I did some similarly crazy stuff as you. I, I made a whole website. <laughs> I did some similarly crazy stuff. But um, I chose not to take it because I was asked to be a junior producer on UMTV Raps Africa. Yeah. And I thought that it would be better for me to immediately go into being a producer because I thought, boom, I'm just going to hit the big time immediately. I was a stupid little kid. But You weren't stupid. You were excited. I was excited. No one is stupid. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I was a naive, excited little boy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so essentially, how I always found myself in situations where I was so daunted by the people in the room. And I always felt so almost not good enough, like that imposter syndrome snuck in. How were you in these rooms with Mandla N and Susanna Ward? How, how were you cool? You know? For me, that stuff doesn't phase me. Like, yes, you're at the top of your game, but you started where I was. Everyone starts somewhere, you know? So I was like, I'm gonna take full opportunity to learn from you. Like, I will speak to the producer, I'll speak to the executive producer, because mm. don't be afraid. Like, everyone started somewhere. I don't wanna name drop, but <laughs> I did, I worked on Global Citizen, and that's, Bigger stars, international stars, Beyonce, Trevor yeah. Noah, all of them. And actually got to work and meet the producers who were producing that show at the time. I was a runner. Like, I was driving around golf carts. And, like, that was what I did. And taking food to people and stuff. And I was quite happy. Some of the funnest work you do. Literally. Yeah. A golf cart at the soccer stadium. It's amazing. Like, now I'm like, oh, I have to walk. <laughs> like, but... So, and I got to meet the producer of that and found out now he's just, he does the Grammys, he does the Oscar, he, like that's what he produces. So it was like, I did not know this at the time because I did not know who I would be working with. Mm. But looking back, I was like, damn, I should have asked more questions and stuff because they were so, I feel like execs, producers, line producers, directors, they're very open. Mm. They want to teach. They want you to be like, how did you start in the industry? But then why do we have this perception that they're not open. Like, why do normal people just think that these guys are going to bite my head off? That these guys are going to be so hectic? I'm not sure. <laughs> like, honestly, every producer, every executive producer, like, obviously, maybe the people who've approached them, they were working. <laughs> you have to know the time and place. If they're in the middle of a scene, obviously, hi, sorry. How did you get started <laughs> in the industry? Know your timing and stuff. But... I have never found anyone that was not willing to share their story with mm. me and be welcoming and welcome to the set and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I don't <laughs> know. Like maybe people need to know their timing, like not to be harsh or anything, <laughs> but just approach people like during breaks, if you're on set and there's um, a tea break or they're doing a setup and you see the directors on their phone, Go up to them and speak to them. Like, don't, when they're concentrating on, like, mm. a lighting thing, be like, hi, you know, I'm this person. What <laughs> advice do you have for me? You know, like. It's a it's, it's, it's time and place type of thing, exactly, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. All right. Um, Let's hop back onto where we were. Internship program. So, after um, making the four, two films, um, at the beginning and then we made two at the end of the program the first two films we then got some time off and got to go back onto a professional set not that our sets weren't professional but like a, a proper running set <coughs> excuse me and this is when i got to work on the bachelor of south africa season one. Oh yeah wow 
I was like, reality is where I want to be. What like, was that show we used to watch about the content producer? Which one? And then you became the girl. <laughs> no, I did not become her. I know you didn't become Unreal. Was Unreal. Unreal. Yes. Yes. It was crazy. Like, guys, guys, guys. That show's hectic. Unreal comes out and it's a show about this content producer on a reality TV show who stirs I shit to I'm make stuff her. happen. Then Jackie gets hired as a content producer. It was the cra- It was the craziest shit. I thought it was, and every single day, like a season of Unreal would come out. I would go to Jackie and be like, Jackie, <laughs> did you do that? Did you do this shit? Did you have you have you ever gotten someone killed? <laughs> no, for legal reasons, no. <laughs> okay, you're on the Bachelor. Tell us about the, the bachelor. bachelor. And from that, so we got to watch the rose ceremony and how that happened, guys. Reality TV is not scripted. I can't say this enough because some people are like, oh, you write scripts. I promise we do not write scripts for reality TV. It is not scripted. It is planned as in we know we're going to this restaurant. We know this person is coming over for tea. That's it. I pro- reality stars are not actors. But do you cause? Like as a content producer on a reality TV show, is that I what your never. title was? No, no. then I was just an intern. There you were just an intern, but yeah. you eventually became a content producer. Yes. But no, I have never... You've never caused? I can't. You've never been like, hey, you know, Julia called you a bitch. The Bachelor girls, the housewives, yes, those are the only two major ones, told me stuff in confidence that I could not tell other people. Wow. Is that just because you're a, a good... Per- oh, that's okay. me as a human being. Okay. That's why I don't think I would last well in a reality show because i'm like you tell me something in confidence i'm not gonna go blab like because i know you don't want people to know this and stuff Mm. good and bad of reality tv (laughs) like (laughs) i honestly became the psychologist for a lot of the people like they would phone me after set bear in mind we worked on 18 hour day and then they would phone me like (sighs) jackie how did i look how was i was this girl actually mean to me So, yeah, it was very, so batch, back to Bachelor, <laughs> it was very interesting and stuff. Um, got to know the girls quite well. Also, they have said this, I'll check, might have to edit this out. <laughs> but they, um, they aren't allowed to use their cell phone, they only allow their cell phone once a week for 20 minutes to phone their parents. And the house mother has to sit in with them and listen to the conversation to make sure they aren't giving any content points or anything. Wow. Because reality shows are filmed before they actually air. Most things are. Mm. So that was, so um, so we would have our phones and they'd be like, oh, Jackie, can you just scroll on Instagram so we can just look over your shoulder because <laughs> we miss our phones so much. So, I mean, they also went to Discam the one day on like our off day. And some of them spent like 3,000 rand in this room because they had not been to a shop in a while. Wow. <laughs> they were just like, oh my gosh, this, this is a shop. But like, we haven't been here in a while. We've been stuck in the house, in the mansion and stuff. So it's very interesting to see how the reality world is with people when they've been in it for so long. Because we came in, I think, we were uh, probably, they were two weeks into filming The Bachelor. Yeah. We stayed until they left on the honeymoon um, for the honeymoon, I mean the proposed the rose ceremony, the final rose ceremony. So we oh, stayed, okay. we stayed until the final rose ceremony. So you never saw the person become the bachelor. No, because they couldn't take interns to Mauritius. I mean, oh, <laughs> they're like, oh, shame. cute, <laughs> you guys can stay. Oh, uh, um, a bit too much budget for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. It's okay. We got to work on other stuff. So, um, so yeah. So it was just interesting to see how when people are in a place together for so long, not experiencing anything from the outside world, just to see how psychologically people change and they're mm. like the smallest things will set someone off. And it's like, okay, like had this been in a normal situation, I don't think you would have, you know, been hurt oh. and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not that you guys are crafting what they're doing. You're crafting the environment mm-hmm. and then the environment is place. unlike what their normal things is, exactly. so they start to go a little loopy. But that's why everyone who enters a reality show has to go through the psychometric testing as well, so that you can know how someone will react in a certain situation. Mm. Also, to make sure everyone is stable, 
Because, like, in Unreal, a lady jumped off a building. No one has done that. <laughs> it's a reality show. But, yeah. So. Because, like, I would always wonder what happens if you push a person too far and then they go and they grab a knife on set. There are no knives anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all gone. But, yeah. So, it was very interesting to see. And, like, but a lot of the stuff, if there was a fight between, let's say, two of the Bachelor girls, you could not speak about that unless it was on camera. So if the fight was not on camera, it didn't happen. Mm, yeah. It was hectic. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was interesting. Really enjoyed The Bachelor. And I was like, reality TV, this is where I want to be. So now from The Bachelor, did the Real Housewives people just find you? No. So I, the, um, one of the heads of the program, of the internship program, she was leaving and she was working on, um, there were houses of Joburg and she really liked my work ethic and stuff. And it was like, oh, Jackie, why didn't you come along? And I was like, Just real Great. quick, which Real Housewives have you worked on, Joburg or Durban? Both. Both. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But Joburg obviously preceded Durban. Yes. No, jo yeah. <coughs> yes. Joburg. Joburg was already, we were shooting season two in 2019. Yes. Uh, jo Durban only started in 2021. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, I described you in this position as a content producer and she didn't cause shit, guys. So now <laughs> what I want to ask is what were you, what did you actually do? Like what, what, what did you do on set as a content producer? So I started off on my contract. <laughs> I was a production assistant slash second assistant director. Oh, yeah. Everyone starts from the bottom. Production assistant is normal. Like, I was quite happy to be this. By the time I finished working on Real Houses of Joburg, I was first, first assistant director, director, second assistant director, cast handler slash cast coordinator, and production assistant. In South Africa, you don't just have one job. You have multiple. <laughs> <laughs> it's very normal. Um, so on, on the set of The Real Houses of Joburg, I started off production. I would still go to set every day. I was the person we got um, our per diems per day for food and stuff. So I was the one dealing with the money, making sure everyone had their stuff, going to buy oh, wow, food. Wow, they trusted you. <laughs> going to buy the food and stuff. If the, the crew was still busy filming, they'd be like, Jackie, and I'd have orders and then I'd have to keep everyone's change and give them the exact change. It was horrible. I hated it. I remember doing that too. <laughs> oh my gosh. But the Vincent, our one driver was amazing. <laughs> he would hear my complaints of Vincent, like there's just money everywhere. And like these people haven't given me the right order. Shame. Bless Vincent's little soul. Love him. Um, so yeah, that was, so that's what I started off doing. But then I became the housewives person go-to person to talk to mm. they loved offloading on me absolutely loved it i heard things i probably would not have wanted to hear ever <laughs> in my life but i heard them and it was very interesting that they came to me because i was quite young at that stage mm. like well you're 24 20 24 25 yeah yeah 24 and they would tell me stuff and i was like oh okay like <laughs> wow like i'm i'm sorry you're going through this and stuff but a lot of people do come and talk to me it's just even in the shops people love offloading their stories <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm in a line and i'm like i must have I'm the face sure I've done it to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're friends <laughs> it's okay <laughs> beginning at the end yes <laughs> but when we traveled i got to stay in the nice accommodation because i got to stay with them mm. they were like jackie you stay i got to stay in a in a um i got to go glamping never thought i'd be this the only crew member that got to stay in one of these tents because others had to stay at another accommodation but i had to stay with the housewives amazing there was no cell service so the housewives could only contact me by by walkie talkies <laughs> Shame the place hadn't taught them how to use the walkie talkies. <laughs> so the next morning when I woke up, I was like, oh, I'm going to go see how everyone is. And they're like, oh, we didn't know how to contact if there was an emergency. <laughs> we were like in the bush as well. So I'm like, <laughs> Shame. Um, so that was very grateful for that. Um, very grateful for the experience. Learned a lot. Learned. So 
in life, you have a toolbox and everything you learn is another tool added to your toolbox, right? Mm. The Real Housewives of Joburg season two taught me always have a plan B mm. right through to plan Z because <laughs> <laughs> not, not just one plan B. You have to have multiple because maybe you're about to start filming and one of the housewives calls you and it's like, oh, sorry, my child is sick. I cannot come in today. All right, cool. We've already got this housewife here. What can we do with her? Okay, let's go shopping here. Oh, okay, it's not her, like, her brand. She's going to be associated mm. with that shop. Fine, we'll go somewhere else. So you have to be... You have to create narratives on the fly. Literally, which is great in real life. I mean, now, always have plans. <laughs> Everyone will know me as like, Jackie, but do we never see you on the weekend? You always seem to be going to lunch or this or that. Guys, if someone f- cancels, you have to have another plan. <laughs> <you know? laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> So, yeah, so that was a great tool I learned from also how to deal with people. Mm. When you're working on a set, we work six days a week in the South African industry, South African film and TV industry, and you get to become a family with your crew. Mm. Especially, we were we worked A and B crews, so I was um, with one crew, and then uh, the PA was with another crew. We got even closer, obviously, because we were always, always together. Mm. Yes, there were fights that broke out. It's a family. It's friendship. It's normal. But at the end, you're still very, very close. And You've always had an amazing ability to stay calm even when people are disrespecting you. I don't know how to like fight back because I don't want to hurt someone. Like I would never, I don't raise my voice. Mm. You've been in a situation with me when someone disappointed us in our third year. Mm. <laughs> it's not, shouting doesn't help people will never help like people just get timid and scared how you say something will have the impact not not the louder you say it you don't need to shout that is very true and i've noticed a large emphasis of what has gotten you where you are in your career is the manner in which you interact with people and the manner in which you choose to interact with people which is being fearless and faithful to what you say but also remaining kind kindness can go a long way you don't know what other people are going through. Mm. Always have to remember, yes, this person might, you might see them like, oh my gosh, I want their life. I want their success. I want this. I want that. But you don't know what they're going through. You don't know if they're actually happy. Mm. So I think with that, working so closely with like the crew and stuff, you're always remembering, yes, guys, we have to get these shots done. We have to get this and that done. You're still human. Mm. You're still human. You're still going to go through stuff. Someone is going through something. Someone might have had a fight with their girlfriend or boyfriend. And, you know, they're just not at their 100% today. What's happening? How can I help? Do you need me to, like, be more vocal today so you can just be with yourself? You know what? Because you being an asshole, you being angry is not going to do anything. No. It's not going to make the situation better. And then it just makes everyone around you feel the same energy as you. And then it goes on to set, and then it's with the housewives, with the actors, with the actresses. And then it's just not a good day. So rather, okay, you're not at your 100% today. Let me take on what you would be doing, Mm. and I'll help. I'll do what I can do. And it's, you know, let's make the best show that we can, because that's why we're all here, right? It's our Mm. passion. There you go. That's (laughs) why we're all here. Exactly. Remembering that we're all here for a reason. We're here to shoot this one thing. Exactly. But now, here's my thing, right? Okay. So, now you've reached season two of Real Housewives of Johannesburg. Mm-hmm. And you guys, things are happening and you're still having to fix things and create new narratives on the fly when things do break down. But it's still one of the highest rated shows on television. Um, then they decide that they're going to do the Real Housewives of Durban. How did that come about? So I wasn't actually in any of the pre-planning phase, to uh, to be honest. I was just, I actually was unemployed at the time, as you are as a freelancer. You go from job to job. And I got a phone call. I've been unemployed longer than I've been employed. (laughs) (laughs) Film industry. (laughs) That's okay. Um, And... From someone I'd worked with previously, they had put my name forward to the Hustles of Durban. And also, because I'm Durban-based, it would be better because they would not have to pay for accommodation. Mm. Durban-based because I've got a house. Well, I've got, it's not my house, my mom's house in Durban. I've got a place to stay. So I got a phone call. I was 
chilling and they were like hi we're looking for a scheduler i was like don't know what that is sure what cool <laughs> uh we need you in durban tomorrow and it's just one of those times we have to be like cool i'll be in durban tomorrow <laughs> let's let's do this did you just get in your car and go pack up yeah i was like well if i don't have stuff <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'm going to buy some. Exactly. And drove to Durban. It was a Sunday. And they were like, listen, we've got a meeting happening at five o'clock Sunday evening. And I was like, great. Drove straight on home. Guys, can we just talk about how these people are having meetings on Sunday evenings at five o'clock? <laughs> they were starting shooting on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, cool. Drove to Durban, went home, had a nap. And I was like, right, let's go to Schlanger get there and one of the directors i worked on a previous job she was actually working on this job and i was so excited mm. valentino oh my gosh such an amazing director so i'd actually worked with her on another job where i did content produce content direct and we traveled africa we went to ghana kenya zimbabwe wow. and south africa wow so I'll side note on that job and then <laughs> come, back to, <laughs> come back to Housewives. And um, so it was the same people that I worked with on Real Housewives of Joburg with. And they were like, we want you to come along on this thing. And we know you're interested in, interested in content. Why don't you try content directing, content producing? I remember during that period of time, though, that wasn't a completely smooth ride for you. That That tour of Africa was tough. It was tough. Every three days, we were in a bus on a plane to a new place Oof. every six seven days we were going to a new country in three weeks i did 14 flights <laughs> wow yeah it was tough ghana was probably my toughest place why so it was val who was the director of the show content director and then i was junior content producer content director because i was still learning i'd never yeah. done this before and we were so it was a music show and we had to um it was basically like idols but for groups okay yeah and around africa around africa yes different different um music genres so we get to ghana and stuff and on the ground out of the crew not talking about execs on the ground i was one of two females the other being the director mm -hmm. Straight away, one of the camera guys, shout out to Sims, came up to me and was like, listen, if you are ever feeling unsafe or anything, let us know. We are mm. here for you, which to me was absolutely amazing. I didn't know many of the people that we were traveling with. It just flown, flown from Joburg to Ghana, did a via via, but get there, not knowing many of these people. And it's a harsh reality of our industry is that a lot of bad things happen. Yeah. So I was just like... Thanks, Sims. I appreciate that. And cool. Now we're directing in Ghana. And I'm I'm the one who has to do the interview post the singing audition. Mm. And I just was like the groups, especially the groups that were just males, would not listen to me. Mm. I eventually had to call over my um the content the actual content director, because I was a junior, be like, listen, can you maybe try help? And he was a male and they straight away responded to him. And I was just like, okay. I Straight away, I was like, I have to calm down. Cause this is in Ghana, correct? Yeah, this is Ghana. It's not, I'm not used to this. Keeping okay. in mind, Ghana has a death penalty upon gay people. So I think they have a, a very distinct, uh, a very distinct patriarchal society. Yes. And it was a very harsh, quick reality for me. So I was like, okay. Um, the content director and I came up with a plan. He would do most of the interviews. If there was anyone we wanted to interview separately by themselves, I would then do that, which was fine because I was also slash production coordinating on the sa at the same time. As I said, we don't have just have one job title. Mm. <laughs> so that was a very interesting learning experience for me. Once again, added another tool to the toolbox. Okay, this is what you do in this situation. Mm. Obviously, we re remain calm. We don't be disrespectful because it's not our culture. It's not our country. It's not your place. We don't, we have to respect how they are because we're visitors in their country, you mm. know? Go to Kenya, complete opposite experience. Yeah, Over you can't be Western about this in mm. that situation. Yeah. 
Yeah, go to Kenya. Go to Kenya, complete opposite experience. Everyone was so forthcoming. Everyone was like listening and being like, oh, this is what happened. And so excited to be interviewed, right? Mm. Then we came to Zimbabwe. And bearing in mind the story I told you about Sims being there when I needed someone to be there. Um, we met one of the clients because uh, they came to set just to see how everything was going. And we we're just chatting and stuff. And he had this really weird shaped bag. It was like in the shape of pants. And I was like, ah, oh, cool bag. Like, you know, like just making conversation because it's a client and stuff. And he was like, oh, yeah, I got an Italy. I was just like, okay, that's great. I didn't ask where you got it from. I was just commenting, oh, cool bag. Um, this was in Bulawayo. Also, the whole team was exhausted by this stage. We'd been traveling and stuff. Mm. And Bulawayo it had the jacarandas. We were like, we can smell home. <laughs> we are so close to South Africa. It's actually scary. I think I even sent you guys a, a screenshot of the Google Maps of how far I was away from you guys. I was like, missing my people. Not that the film crew was not my people because by that stage, obviously we'd become very close because now you've been but traveling. Still. And I'm also the only female mainly with the guys because as the director, Val would have to go off and look at stuff. So I was hanging a lot around mm. with the guys. Cool. We moved from Bulawayo to Harare and we're in a very nice hotel and stuff. And we downstairs with the contestants and the same client was there. And um, <laughs> he was like, oh, Jackie, how did you sleep last night? And I was like, fine, thanks. Weird. Like, Bear in mind, I don't give my room number out to anyone Good. because because I'm a female and I'm like, you never know what can happen. No one knows my room number, only like the females and stuff. And obviously the execs who would who assign us our rooms. Me. Yeah. Um, so he says, how did I sleep last night? So I said, great, thanks. He was like, yeah, well, tonight I'm coming to your room. So I was like, no, you're not. No one knows my room number. And he then said, I assigned you your room. Straight away, I froze because, I mean, I'm quite good with comebacks, but that I was just like, I don't even know what to say to that. And Sim straight away, because we were working, he, I was a content director and he was my camera person. He straight away came and said, you do not speak to Jackie like that. Like, don't you dare. Like, it's unacceptable what you've just said to her. Which for me was great to see because so often you don't see men standing up to men for that. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. And Sims, thankfully, was just like, Jackie, ignore him. Don't go near him. Don't worry. We'll be together working. So he will not come near us again. And it was just like, a, like, why? <laughs> why? Like, yes, you may have been joking and stuff, but. It's not an appropriate it's, joke. No, it's not okay. It was not okay. So anyway, I still want to go back to Zim, though. I still want to go back to Harari. It was beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely he is stunning. not a representation of no, the country. <laughs> no. Um, you can't blame stuff. On a on, person. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, okay. And then we came back to South Africa and we went to Cape Town, Durban, and um, back to Joburg. And yeah, so it was a very interesting trip. And as I, as I was trying to make my point, I got very close to the director, Val. Mm. Um, Anyway, so now we're in Durban and I'm sitting down and in the restaurant with everyone else and Val walks through and you would swear, you would swear we hadn't seen each other for years. <laughs> we were so excited to see each other and be working with each other. And this is when I also found out what I'd actually be doing as a scheduler. <laughs> at the proper job title. I'd actually ended up doing it on other jobs. Just I wasn't called a scheduler. It was just, oh, Jackie, please do this, please do that. So basically a scheduler is... You schedule what was going to be shot each day. Okay. As I said, for reality shows, you need a plan. You don't need scripts. You need a plan. Because you can't just show up and be like, ah, let's just film this wall. Like, you know, it has to have a story. You have to be like, okay, these two ladies, um, they haven't seen each other well. They're looking to buy a painting. And that's that's like the story they would. But everything that happens in there, that's natural. Yeah. yeah. You don't, you, there's no one whispering in people's ears, oh, say this, say this. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I worked on um, Durban Housewives once again. Started off as a scheduler, and evidently became the point of contact for all, the, all of the housewives. Standard as usual. <laughs> and once again, there was the offloading. Oh my gosh, Jackie, this happened. This happened. Is this okay? Which is fine, guys. One day I might write a book. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But. 
And you created a few lifelong bonds with those ladies too. Yeah, I they still, still speak to you to this day. Still speak to them. Um, friends, most of them on Instagram. They like tag me and stuff, wish me happy birthday, Aww. send me. I actually saw one of the housewives last year. I was just randomly in Amshanga at the pier and she walked past and, oh my gosh, Jackie, it's so nice to see you and stuff. So that was great. Um, People are wondering, how does she know this person from TV? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't look like she should be on TV. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so yeah, so that was also... Very interesting, very nice to be back in Durban. And the difference for me between like the housewives of Durban and the housewives of Joburg is obviously Housewives of Joburg was already established. This was season one of Durban. Yeah. And it was so great to be on a season one of something. Like, yes, I was on there for the bachelor, but not from the beginning and not in those production meetings with the director mm. working stuff out and stuff. Really, really loved that. Like that was amazing. And just seeing how these housewives started, like, not too sure. Yeah. And not too sure what was happening. And to see the, like, to see the final show come out on TV, what, like, oh, amazing. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Um, another reality show that I worked on was I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Ooh. Australia. That I was a logger. Make that make sense. How were you on an Australian TV show in South Africa? Sure. So one of my friends from Real Housewives of Joburg phoned me to say this company was looking for a logger. Now, a logger is someone where you watch the screens and you type what is being said, what is happening, because the show that, that I would be working on is li basically live and they submit episodes every day. So... I'm a Celebrity UK goes to Australia to film. I'm a Celebrity Australia comes to South Africa to film. They We film near the Kruger Park, <laughs> only giving that location. What is the premise? Is it out? Yeah. So basically it's celebrities, Australian celebrities, and then there's a few international ones that um, have to survive in the jungle. Basically, <laughs> the jungle. Oh, like, okay. I think Casper Nuevez tweeted, guys, we don't have a jungle here, but it was the premise of the show. Because I think one of the celebrities tweeted, I'm here in the South African jungle. And it's like, guys, <laughs> there's no jungle. <laughs> so, and they basically have to, it's like fear factor mixed with a bit of survivor. Oh, okay. That type of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, they don't get accommodation. They literally sleep outside under the trees. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so they sleep like that. They have to earn their food. They have to do tasks. And if they're not enjoying the tasks, they shout, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And then how many stars they earn is how much quantity food they get and also what they get for food. Like maybe they failed the one task and they only get rice that evening or beans. And that's, and like <laughs> there's like 12 camp members and you have to like survive off of that. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about this, but is that literally what they were eating or were you guys sneaking them a street rice too? No, that's literally what they were eating. Like obviously they were like had breakfast, which was oats. And then there was fruit, like bananas and stuff. Yeah. We do not sneak food, <laughs> I promise. Also in that, in, in those type of shows like Survivor and stuff, catering that has to be quite far away from set because when you're so hungry and have not been eating as you normally would your sense of smell becomes stronger because obviously you're looking for food so yeah so like crew members i know there's chicken five kilometers from me <laughs> Okay, Jackie, um, we're actually running out of time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, no. no um, I, want, uh, I want us to just quickly chat about what you're doing right now, if you're allowed to speak sure. about it. Because from the last conversation I had with you, your job currently is you're producing shoots that are happening around the world and you're coordinating crews that are in different parts of the world while you're not there. How does that Correct. work? So I work for a company. I remote work. I'm based in South Africa. But as CP said, I'm coordinating shoots, Somalia, Ukraine, Syria, Turkey, Costa Rica. Why is it only hardcore places? <laughs> so we film shoots for NGOs. So oh, they want to okay. be showing where the, the funds are going. 
Okay. Yeah. So in Ukraine, we shoot for an NGO and um, which has been a very interesting place to shoot. I'm not even allowed to know some of the locations our crew is going to. Oh, geez. They only found out once in country. Because it may endanger them. Be- yes, because of safety and stuff. And they don't want people to know where some of the places are. So it's been hectic, especially time difference places, such as we were filming the Pakistan floods last year. We had mm-hmm. a crew out there. They were three, four hours ahead of us. Mm-hmm. My boss and other colleagues are based in the UK, so they went to two hours behind us. So it's a, lo- a lot of no sleep happens when there's emergencies. Also, we did Syria and Turkey, the earthquake that just recently happened. Oh my God. And every day we get in content sent us when they can, because obviously internet is not as fast anymore. They send stuff to us. We're sending it to p- people to then post straight away on social media. Like, how, how do you deal with an emergency when you're hundreds of miles away? It's difficult. Well, can you rather tell me what kind of emergencies come into place? So it's usually natural disasters that we deal with. As I said, the flooding and the earthquake and that. And it's just from, as we've discussed previously, I'm a caring person. So if you're like, okay, we're at the shoot. Um, we need to be photographing this, this and this. Cool. Thanks. Please send when you can. And then they send it, but sometimes it might not be what we wanted. But also you have to you have to make the client aware that they might not get what they want because people have just experienced a traumatic experience. Mm-hmm. Like we had, the earthquake was at 4 a.m. Syrian Turkey time. We had people already out by lunchtime, like photographing, sending us content and stuff. You have to move quickly. As I said, that toolbox of mine where plan A, plan B, all of those, that came into place. Like flying guys to Turkey. Thankfully, we had pe- we were finding people in country. I was scrolling through Instagram. I was like looking at the hashtag Turkey earthquake, hashtag Syria earthquake. Hi, we are this. I'm from this company. Are you able to photograph us? Are you able to get some interviews for us? And then there's also the language barrier. I was having to type things into Google Translate, translate it, make sure the translation made sense, to then send it back to the people, being like, hi, is like this, this, and this, and this. Cool. And then they would respond in Arabic and then be like, okay, cool. Let's quickly translate what you were saying. Wow. So everything that I've worked on is preparing me for the next job. It's just weird how it's been working out, mm. but it's crazy actually. Like, that is amazing. Yeah. So that's why like on this one, we obviously have our like not so hectic shoots where like we do the farming stuff in Ken in Somalia. We do we show um there's this amazing company that provides reproductive health to women in areas that don't usually get it and stuff and where they're mostly patriarchal um mm. villages, communities. And it's just it's so rewarding. I'm loving this job. Like just to see the whole NGO side. I never thought I'd do this. Mm. Like, I, it never even crossed my mind. But once again, a show finished. I was like, ah, unemployed. Need to look for my next job. Looked on LinkedIn, found this company and was like, hi, I'm based in South Africa. Is it okay? And they're like, it's great. We all work remotely. It's so trippy that you went from doing something so vanity-faced, like a reality TV show, to then doing something so selfless. <sighs> But yeah, um, Jackie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks so much for having me. It's been um, fun. <laughs> it, it was fun, eh? It wasn't. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, keeping you up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you gotta go. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> um, I really think a lot of people are going to learn a lot from, from your story. And I know me personally, just being a producer, there's so much that I still need to learn in terms of how to be calm and cool and that statement that you made to me of everybody starts somewhere so few of us remember that it's so hard to remember that also to stay calm you as a producer you're the leader of the pack you're the leader of the crew if you're freaking out remember your energy is going to go through to everyone else Mm. don't want that on the set you want you have to hide it it's tough sometimes i know (laughs) but you just put a smile and carry on Mm. That's the sound bite. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Like and subscribe. <laughs>